following the Second World War, there are many questions that emerged about the life of Adolf Hitler and the high-ranking Nazis. As the Allies and the Soviets rampaged into the Third Reich's lands, there were many soldiers who pillaged and pinched important historical artefacts, and still today many of these objects relating to senior Nazis emerge at auctions around the world. Uniforms of senior Nazis exist in museums, and there are lots of pieces of property belonging to Hitler which are missing or inaccessible. For example, the pistol Hitler used to take his life inside of the Führerbunker is either in a Moscow archive, having previously been sat on the desk of Joseph Stalin, or it lies possibly buried still today inside of Berlin, near to a bridge. But one of the most interesting trophies associated with Hitler and the dictator, which has been searched for for decades, was Hitler's globe. But the legacy of this was made famous by one of history's greatest comic actors. But what happened to Hitler's missing globe? As always, to support our channel, click subscribe. A huge globe, which was owned by Hitler, was made infamous by Charlie Chaplin's film, The Great Dictator, in which he lampooned the Nazi dictator. It was this film that brought the idea of the globe to the audiences of thousands around the world, but it's known that Hitler possessed one or two limited edition globes, known as the Columbus Globe for state and industry leaders, or the Führer Globe. There were two of these specifically made. One was for the Nazi Party, created in the mid-1930s in Berlin, and the other was specifically made for the dictator himself, to remain presumably inside of his office. These globes had large wooden bases and had been built by the Columbus factory, and it was said that the one which was kept by Hitler inside of the new Reich Chancellery and inside of his offices has not been found by the Allies, and this has not been recorded. Specifically, Hitler's globe was colossal, and it was nearly the size of a car, for example a Volkswagen Beetle, and it cost a fortune to create. On the globe were a number of specific changes made to appease and please the Nazi dictator. For example, where today Ethiopia would be found in Africa, Abyssinia, as it was known, was changed to Italian East Africa, outlining the Italian invasion of the region. And this may have been done due to Hitler's close friendship with the Italian dictator Benito Mussolini, who would visit the Reich Chancellery and Hitler a number of times. It's not known how many Columbus Globes or Globes like this were made, especially as the factory was destroyed during Allied air raids in 1943. There are many other Nazi Globes which do exist, which were found inside of the houses of senior politicians, such as Hermann Göring. However, what happened to Hitler's Globe is a mystery. The legacy of this item may be more prominent than how it was perceived at the time by the dictator, and he probably did not hold it in high regard, and may have just seen it as a piece of furniture inside of his office. One Polish historian claims that the globe was inside of Hitler's office in the Reich Chancellery, and that he was probably not a fan of it, as he states, Hitler probably didn't think anything about the globe. There's no picture of Hitler beside the globe. He controlled all photographs of himself. If the globe had actually meant anything special to Hitler, then there would surely be a photograph. When items were saved towards the end of the Second World War, huge amounts of artwork and gold were hidden inside of salt mines and in various other places, and because of the expense of the globe, the Nazis, if they valued it, could have moved it very easily to safety to protect it from Allied bombing raids, as the Reich Chancery would suffer heavy damage also during the Battle of Berlin. Hitler in the years before the war had ordered expensive renovations of the Reich Chancery, and he said it was not big enough to house the different areas of business inside of Nazi Germany, and Hitler's architect, Albert Speer, remodelled the new chancellery, which Hitler saw as his heart of government, almost like how Whitehall is perceived in Britain. The globe following the renovation work was then placed inside of Hitler's new office, and it stayed here until the end of the war, as the Battle of Berlin erupted. But it's likely that this globe was seen as a huge trophy by those Soviet forces who entered the Reich Chancellery. There was a huge amount of looting which plagued Hitler's residences and buildings at the end of the conflict, and also a huge amount of damage done, with huge Nazi eagles being slammed to the ground and smashed. But there have been a number of globes around the world that
and have said to have been Hitler's globe. There are three even inside of Berlin. One is housed inside of the Geographical Institute, another inside of the German Historical Museum, and a final one inside the Marsha Museum. Two more globes claim to be Hitler's globe inside of collections in Munich, and some of them are shown with a bullet hole in where Germany was, or Germany is simply erased from it, with this presumably done by the enemies of the Nazis. But it's considered that not one of these globes is from the office of Hitler inside of the Chancery, and of course a famous one. One of these it was later claimed, and specifically the globe inside of the German Historical Museum, possibly and probably belonged to Hitler's foreign minister, Jürgen von Ribbentrop, and that this has been seen, and that this would have been kept inside of von Ribbentrop's offices. There was one globe owned by Hitler, found by an American soldier, inside of the ruins of the Berghof, Hitler's mountain retreat and home in the Obersalzberg. The house had been looted by American forces, and John Barzamine, the US soldier, took the globe home, and he then sold it in 2007 for a price of around $100,000. But one theory regarding the lost globe of Hitler relates to the Soviets, and specifically Lavrenti Beria, the Soviet Minister of Internal Affairs and the Chief of the NKVD. Beria was a man who carried out the will of Stalin with ruthless efficiency and brutality, executing thousands during Stalin's purges. Beria himself later fell from grace and was executed following Stalin's death, but he was one of the first people to enter the Reich Chancery after Berlin had fallen into the hands of the Soviet Red Army. It's possible that Beria, understanding the significance of where he was inside of Hitler's offices, may have taken the globe of Hitler, then transported this to Lubyanka and later the KGB headquarters. When queries regarding this were launched, this was not confirmed or denied and was simply ignored by the Soviets. There was a lot more which was stolen from the Reich Chancery, and there are a lot of artefacts inside of museums today. For example, I've seen remains of huge statues of Kaiser Wilhelm II inside the Imperial War Museum in Duxford, which was taken as a trophy of war, and also the huge Nazi eagles that were found in bronze all over the Reich Chancery building inside the Imperial War Museum in London. There were also many other statues that were desecrated and taken as spoils of war, but there are still today many questions that are around regarding the globe. Firstly, if this item ever came to the world's attention, there is a good chance that it would be sold by someone for a huge amount of money. If one globe that belonged to Hitler raised $100,000 over 15 years ago, then it's likely that the globe of Hitler from inside the Reich Chancery would be worth millions today. Secondly, it would be difficult to prove how the globe came into the hands of someone legitimately, and it would have been a piece of stolen war loot, which someone would be profiting off. It's likely there would be a huge amount of interest in Hitler's globe also. It's an item which was associated with the megalomania of Adolf Hitler, and his obsession to expand his empire, and many believed he was obsessed with the idea of world domination, and the globe inside his office helped to connote this, as did the work of Chaplin in his films. There are a few things we know for certain though, that at the end of the war, Hitler's Columbus Globe was inside the Reich Chancery when it was stormed by the Soviets. This is certain as it was captured by a cameraman, so it disappeared after the Soviets arrived in the political ministries and buildings, but this makes it most likely that it was stolen by a Soviet official, or someone like Lavrenti Beria, and it must have been someone who was rather powerful. Also, the globe does not look in too bad a state, bearing in mind the chancery was heavily bombed and was very damaged. There are images of Soviet guards stood next to it, and it's even taller than a number of them. But what happened to it today remains a mystery, and much of the activity around the right chancery at the end of April 1945 remains strange and unanswered, especially as Adolf Hitler would, in the bunker underground next to the chancery, end his life and it was next to where Hitler's body was burned inside the gardens of the Chancery. But will Hitler's globe ever emerge? It's hard to say. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.